Hi there, it's Michelle Replogle, your partner in real estate, and I am interviewing Lisa Mize today, uh, lender or mortgage or extraordinaire. I've worked with her over the years, and uh, I went to elementary school with this gal, so we're a <laughs> longtime local. And, Go um, Bobcats! God, was it Bobcats? I don't even remember. I know they changed Mission Hill Matadors, but anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so we're going to talk about a few things today. One thing I have not touched on in any of these videos before is uh, taking a forbearance with your current uh, your current mortgage. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, but <clears throat> we'll start with rates. So what do you got for me on rates today and this week and maybe what you see coming? <laughs> rates are fabulous, right? I mean, we are at historically low levels. Oh, wow. A home, <clears throat> homeowner can get a 30-year fixed rate mortgage rate at three percent low three percent range um in certain circumstances even something with a two in front of it um so you can't beat them you can't complain about rates right now wow wow and and um what's kind of the high of maybe you have marginal credit what's the yeah i mean it's certainly that's one of the factors that plays in um if you have you know i mean Marginal meaning, you know, sometimes people think that if they have anything less than 780, that's marginal. It's really not. Good credit is 700 and over, um, even 680 credit. When you start getting below maybe 660, that's when we start really seeing it hit the, the pricing uh, where your rate might be a quarter higher, something like that. Okay. Okay. And um, we had kind of a pre screen chat which i thought was pretty interesting about people taking uh forbearance on their mortgage and the pitfalls and what does that look like when you're getting a loan or refinancing getting another it, uh, yeah it definitely has an effect so i mean just to preface it a little bit by saying that many people have uh, run into trouble due to covid 19 where they've lost their jobs they've had their hours cut back, furloughed, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, according to the CARES Act, the lenders can say, hey, if you need help, let us know. And what we're finding is that there's a lot so of misinformation. We, sorry to interrupt. So when you say, if you need help, let me know, that might be the, 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 forbear the forbearance, that might be the, the kind of definition of that? Yeah, if you go to your, your banking website, if you bank with uh, Chase and that's who has your mortgage and you're logged in mm -hmm. it may say are you having trouble making your payments click here I, every lender is different on how they're um, how they're doing that um, but also every lender is different as to how they're treating it so if a customer says god dang my hours got cut back I really want to you know go three months without making my mortgage payment because that's what they're hearing um, some because lenders because of the care some, they can, because of the CARES Act, they might be entitled to this. Uh... Yes, yes. So all lenders are not applying it the same way, though. So some lenders truly are saying, we will defer your payments. You can skip three months and we'll tack it on to the end. You just have to be really clear with what they are offering you. That's really the takeaway is don't just click a button and say, I'm in and I don't have to make payments for three months because of true forbearance is not i even saw somebody post on facebook that uh, lenders will let you pause your mortgage and i really do not like that word pause that makes it sound like pause don't make payments and then resume and start making payments again but no if you've got a twenty five hundred dollar mortgage payment and you skip three months then basically in the fourth month the lender is going to want you to pay ten grand that's the three months that you deferred plus month number four that you're now in and I'm even seeing that some places um, are saying they're not even really disclosing what will happen. You know, some of these people that have lost income might not have that income four months from now. Um, they might still be laid off or whatever. So what happens then? And most of the lenders are pretty much just kind of saying, we'll see. We'll see what happens then. We'll, we'll talk about it. That really scares me. <laughs> um, and the other piece of it that I think you wanted me to touch on is that if you could possibly refinance instead to better your position, try that first. Don't just automatically push the button to get the free forbearance because you know you could end up screwing yourself to where you can't get a loan after that. Um, so wow, yeah, because I mean, three months without mortgage and without income 
doesn't mean when you start up that month that you're not going to have to catch up on car, credit card, and all the other stuff that you might have been a little bit behind on as well. Right. So that, that right. does seem. Um, I did hear of a couple credit unions that are adding it to the back end, but it didn't sound like the big guys were doing that. Um, yeah. So just, I mean, if it were me, and I and I know that it's tempting to go the online route or the chat route because the lenders and loan servicers so are easy. getting yeah they're getting multiple calls, right? You'd be on nobody wants to be on hold for you know forty hours, <laughs> but um, you know it's worth it getting a human being just to find out what am I signing up for here because I find that um, many of my past clients don't actually know, um, and then if they even if they're not being reported late, the lender can't report them late if they do enter into a forbearance agreement um, as per the CARES Act. But even if they're not being reported late, the credit bureaus will still show that the account is in forbearance. And if we see that on a credit report, then I cannot do a loan for that person. Oh, ooh. Yeah. Um, and then if they're in forbearance, could you refinance it? No. Mm. Not us. Yeah. I mean, we're mortgage banker. We're selling our loans. I, I can't speak for, you know, a bank that might, I mean, the, the bank that's doing that, maybe they can do it, but I don't know. Interesting. Okay. Okay. I, I was going to recommend that they call either one of us first, maybe even when they have the screen pulled up with a bank and, you know, I'm just reading this. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Um, but I've, you know, I've also cautioned people against refinancing too, just to make sure that it's really going to work. We've had that conversation before. So yeah, I think um, it's, you need to be careful with your mortgage right now, for sure. Yeah. The other thing I had suggested in a blog post is maybe you should be watching how the banks are treating their clients right now and see who you actually want to do business with. I mean, I, I realize loans get sold, but at the same time, you might want to see how they, they react. Because I know some of the smaller credit unions have had some really good stuff for people. So, I don't yeah, know. yeah, that's true. Um, and then, um, just quickly, what have you experienced um, during SIP, like during the shelter in place? What have you experienced as a lender? Any, any kind of weird things, or just any little antidotes? I think that um, you know concerns about safety. Um, could delay some escrows and primarily that comes down to whether uh, we need a property appraisal yeah um, because the appraisers are taking longer um, you know oh appraisals are taking longer okay yeah I mean between the appraiser and between the um, circumstances on that home obviously if it's vacant or whatever but even so I mean uh, you have to realize that even before the shelter in place mandate started we were already lenders were already dealing with unprecedented levels of mortgage applications just because rates were low. Right. So, I mean, one of my appraisers got 28 orders in one day and that's just one guy. So that is taking a little bit longer. Now we, we do get some um, relief where we can avoid an appraisal sometimes. So you don't know that unless you, you run it through and see if you get that waiver. Um, but I just closed a purchase transaction in um, Santa Cruz and we didn't, we didn't need an appraisal at all. So, um, you know, the buyer still got their reg regular inspections and everything, but we didn't have to have an appraisal. So we were able to close quickly. Um, and then on, that's for purchases really. On refinances, there's many of my loans that I don't need an appraisal on at all, just because they've got the equity um, yeah. and you run it through. And if you get that waiver, you're golden. Um, but uh, yeah, that and then, I mean, that's really directly related to the shelter in place, but just the whole coronavirus, um, you know, people maybe going in forbearance or whatever, lenders are a little bit sketchier on income and credit qualifying. We're really making sure that those people are, we're using that income to qualify them, that they're still employed a couple of days before we fund that loan. Um, double checking those things. So uh, making sure that the people haven't gotten furloughed at the last minute. Well, I mean, overall, that's good for the, for the actual health of the housing market to make sure people that are qualified could buy the houses. Right. Right. We did right. that before and that didn't work out when we didn't really check out. <laughs> so it sounds like overall the market's fairly healthy. We just have to kind of wait for things to open back up. I mean, I'm going out and there's traffic again and 
you know, I mean, I, I just, I know there's going to be some hiccups, but everything seems to be kind of trying to find its way back a bit. Yeah. So I, I think things will, things will be okay. Um, cool. So if people have questions about their loan, I'll put your information down below. They can, they can call you. I would awesome. also have them call you about the forbearance idea too, to make sure before they actually hit that button, make yeah. sure that, um, that's really going to be a good thing for their future. Cause I, I know there's a lot of always escape hatches that seem really cool, but then when it settles in, it's like unemployment, you should get your, uh, you should get your taxes taken out cause you're going to get taxed on it and you're going to forget about that later. Yeah. Stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it was great to talk with you and, um, yeah. I uh, will get back in touch with you and we'll see what else is going on in the market. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Hang on. Let me.